I speak to you with a heavy heart, a lot of pain, a deep sadness. Because the beautiful Himalaya, my home, my birthplace, are suffering with pain. They're facing so many frequent disasters. In spite of us having knowledge of what causes ecological disasters, it was the women of Chipko who woke me to the fragility of these beautiful mountains and the necessity to protect them with the forests. More than four decades ago, from a little village called Rini, in a tributary of the Ganges called Rishikanda, Gora Devi rose and said, we will not let you cut the trees. A decade of struggles and I was so privileged to be a volunteer to say no cutting of trees. These forests give us soil, water and pure air, not timber and revenue and raw materials. Change the paradigm. But in that same valley now on the 7th of February 2021, there has been a disaster near rainy where a dam was being built on Rishikanga and another dam at Tapovan. And because we'd had so many protests against large dams, the new hydroelectric projects are making large networks of tunnels by using weapons of war, dynamite and explosives to blast these fragile mountains. In 2013, a disaster took place in Kedarnath Valley. 5,000 people died. More than 100,000 went missing. In the first two days of monsoon, the heavy rains joined with a glacial lake burst. And this dam building activity in the valleys was the main reason of the disaster. We know that ecologically fragile mountain systems cannot take this violence. And yet we ignore it because we have tricked our minds into creating metrics that are like anesthetics, metrics of growth that lie about extraction, metrics of development that talk about the miles of highways built and the kilowatts extracted out of a river, not how much harm was done to the ecosystem, to the local communities, to the biodiversity, to the rivers and their freedom. We are a civilization that knew that mountains and rivers and plants and forests are all living and all have rights. Vasudeva Kutumkam, we say, the earth is one family. And our ancestors were so wise. They took the sources of our rivers and turned them into sacred spaces of pilgrimage. All the four sources of the tributaries of the Ganges, the Char Dhams, are places of reference. And through this, we protected our mountains and rivers. The sacred was the value we gave. Today, in the madness and narrowness of mind, that value is making money. Value is price. Not only are we blasting our sacred mountains and our sacred Himalaya and our sacred home of the Ganga, we are blasting our ecological civilization. We have to return to our roots for the forests, for the mountains, for the rivers, because the earth has rights, for the local communities that for four decades have been fighting for the integrity of Devabhumi, the land of the divine. This is where all our saints and sages came to learn about the universe to learn about consciousness and taught the rest of the world about oneness, about interconnectedness, about spirituality. My home here in the Himalaya is the source of spiritual learning for the world. It is the source of our material sustenance. The snows in the Himalaya, the third poles, support half of humanity with water. When these snows go because of climate change, what will happen to half of humanity? The glacial melt has made our mighty rivers perennial and have brought the silt that has made the Indo-Gangetic Plain the most fertile land 
on this planet. We have cultivated food for thousands of years because of the gifts of the mountain. Today, not only are our villages in the mountains threatened, all of the Indo-Gangetic plains threatened if we continue to treat our sacred mountains and our sacred rivers as mines for raw material, mines for energy. And our only objective is how can I extract the last bit of kilowatt from a free flowing river, the last bit of timber, the last bit of profits by building roads that are a violation to the spirit of pilgrimage. It's a new beginning for us. And this new beginning has to be based on the rights of Mother Earth, the rights of the sacred Ganga Himalaya, the rights of our forests and rivers, the rights of the last person on this planet. How many more disasters will it take us to wake up? Or will we wake up now?